troop visit. One day after laying out his vision for troop levels in Afghanistan, the Commander-in-Chief heads to Fort Drum. New developments. Shootings at Washington area military installations have plagued police for months. Now, they say they have their man. Plus, everybody in the corner right now, right now, let's go! Hostage let's go. drill. One, U.S. Two, and one. Italian forces team up to tackle a tough task. And off the top, medical students get a crash course in military maneuvers. Around the services starts right now. Now, proudly serving those who serve. This is Around the Services. President Obama gives a personal thank you to troops at Fort Drum. Welcome, I'm Petty Officer Andrew Krause. The Commander-in-Chief touched down in New York this afternoon where he met with service members from the 10th Mountain Division, one of the most deployed units to Iraq and Afghanistan. The President expressed his gratitude for their service and reiterated his commitment to bring thousands of troops home by year's end. You guys have always been there in the toughest fights. Uh, and the, the fact that uh, you are continuing, even as we speak, that, that many of your comrades are there right now uh, under some very tough circumstances is a testimony to your dedication and your patriotism. Because of your outstanding work, what we've been able to do is train an additional 100,000 Afghan soldiers so that they can start carrying on the fight. And because of you, there are signs that the Taliban may be interested in figuring out a political settlement, which ultimately is going to be critical for consolidating that country. It's also because of you that we had the platform to be able to go after bin Laden and al-Qaeda. The 10th Mountain Division has lost more than 200 soldiers since 9-11. On Wednesday, the president laid out his plan to draw down the troop level in Afghanistan after calling the surge a success. In a nationwide address from the White House, President Obama made good on a vow he made 18 months ago that the U.S. military's commitment in Afghanistan would not be open-ended. Thanks to our extraordinary men and women in uniform, our civilian personnel, and our many coalition partners, we are meeting our goals. As a result, starting next month, we will be able to remove 10,000 of our troops from Afghanistan by the end of this year and we will bring home a total of 33,000 troops by next summer, fully recovering the surge I announced at West Point. Currently, there are 100,000 U.S. service members in Afghanistan. That number would go down to 90,000 by the end of 2011 and then drop to 67,000 troops about one year from now. After this initial reduction, our troops will continue coming home at a steady pace as Afghan security forces move into the lead. Our mission will change from combat to support. Under the president's plan, the transition process will be complete by 2014, and at that point, the Afghan people will be responsible for their own security. The president expressed confidence about the timing of this drawdown, saying it has been done from a position of strength. Al-Qaeda is under more pressure than at any time since 9-11. Together with the Pakistanis, we have taken out more than half of Al-Qaeda's leadership. And thanks to our intelligence professionals and special forces, we killed Osama bin Laden, the only leader that al-Qaeda had ever known. This was a victory for all who have served since 9-11. In response to the president's announcement, Defense Secretary Robert Gates said, over the past 18 months, our troops have made tremendous progress degrading the capability of the Taliban while enhancing the Afghan security forces. It's critical that we continue to aggressively prosecute that strategy. I support the president's decision because it provides our commanders with enough resources, time, and perhaps most importantly, flexibility to bring the surge to a successful conclusion. Thursday, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Michael Mullen, testified before the House Armed Services Committee that the drawdown shows the U.S. military has been on the right track over the past 18 months. Well, now we know we did have it right. The strategy is working. Al-Qaeda is on their heels and the Taliban's momentum in the south has been checked. We've made extraordinary progress against the mission we've been assigned and are therefore now in a position to begin a responsible transition out of Afghanistan. Also testifying Thursday, Michelle Flournoy, Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, pointed out the troop level at the end of the drawdown will still be more than double that when President Obama took office. 
clearly this is not a rush to the exits that will jeopardize our security gains. More importantly, at the end of summer 2012, when all of the surge forces are out, there will actually be more Afghan and coalition forces in the fight than there are today. The drawdown is welcome news for many people in America, especially those who have grown tired of being a nation at war over the past decade. The president says he realizes what a difficult decade it has been. However, he says, there are brighter days ahead. That the tide of war is receding. Fewer of our sons and daughters are serving in harm's way. Meanwhile, General David Petraeus, the top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, was on Capitol Hill Thursday for his confirmation hearing as the next director of the CIA. President Barack Obama nom nominated the general to replace Leon Panetta, who was recently confirmed to take over as defense secretary. A Marine reservist who prompted a security scare last week at the Pentagon has been charged in a series of shootings at military buildings in the Washington, D.C. area. Federal prosecutors came 20, claimed 22-year-old Jonathan Meliku opened fire on several military buildings last fall. Coming up, we head downrange to meet a group of service members doing all they can to protect the prize.